express the name of the Lord. We want to welcome every one of us again to the very presence of heaven. And we trust that the God of heaven will bless you mightily in the name of Jesus. Shall we please pray together? We like unto thee, O Lord. We like unto thee, O Lord. Amongst the gods, O is like thee, glorious in holiness. And you are fearful in praises, always do in wonders, hallelujah. The wonder doing God, we thank you. Our Father, we bless you. There is none like you, O oh God, and that is why we are so confident that you are indeed the God to follow. Thank you for this hour. Thank you because you will bless every one of us. You will send your work like never before and your word will do that which it alone can do. To heal, to deliver and to set free. Speak your word, O Lord, even this morning and bless everyone that is connecting. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Today we are going to look at Luke chapter 11 verse 28. Luke chapter 11 verse 28. Jesus speaking here, speaking to me, speaking to you. He says, but he said, yea, rather, Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. The God of heaven will bless you, will bless your family, will bless your work, will bless your business, will bless everything that concerns you. In the name of Jesus, our God is a blessing God. The God that blesses all the time. Today we want to look at walking with God. Walking with God, W-A-L-K-I-N-G. Walking with God. Jesus said here very clearly to hear the word and to keep the word is to walk with God. Because the Bible says two can only walk together if they agree. So what Jesus is saying to you and to me simply here is that when you hear the word, when I hear the word and we keep the word, then we agree with him. And to agree with him is to walk with him. And when you and I agree with God, we agree with Jesus, then we can walk together with him. And as we we'll do so, he will bless us in return. Meaning you do not walk with God in vain. When you walk with God and he walks with you, when you agree with God and he agrees with you, then he will reward you and that reward is to bless you. Blessing in all areas of your life. Bless you financially, bless you physically, bless you maritally, bless you in everything that you do. And the simple reason is that you have agreed to walk together with him and have agreed to walk in his word. Even as you make up your mind today that what you hear now and what you will hear and what you have been hearing and what you will study, even the word of God, even from this day forward, when you make up your mind that you will be for God, you can be sure it will be for you. It will be for you. 
I said God will be for you. And when he's for you, nothing can come to harass you. The Bible says, even in Jeremiah 17, verse 7, Jeremiah 17, verse 7, the scripture tells us that when you trust God, he will bless you. When you make God your focus, when you make his word your focus, when you walk with him and you walk in his word, when you hear his word and you keep his word and you do his word, you can be sure he will bless you. So today God is simply telling you and I, walk with me and you'll be blessed in return. To walk with God, like we said, is to agree with him. And to agree with him means that even as you hear his word, as you study his word, as you teach his word, you must live the word. To live in the word is to do what you are studying, preaching, teaching, hearing, even of the Lord. And that will simply tell God that you trust him and he can trust you in return. So it is of my good, for my good to walk with him and to trust him so that I can be blessed. And the blessing of God is on all sides and in all things. I'm sure you've heard the story of Abraham in Genesis chapter 22. Abraham, Genesis chapter 22. Yes, 22. If you read, if you can read from verse 15 to verse 18. Genesis chapter 22. Read from verse 1 actually to verse 18. But it's in verse 1, 2, and 3, we are told that God told Abraham, Go and sacrifice your son for me, even Isaac that you love. And what did Abraham do? He simply rose up early in the morning and he took Isaac along and one or two of his um, of his of his of his servants and they began to walk down even to Mount Moriah where God wanted him to sacrifice his son. They kept moving on. The Bible says it's a three-day journey. And as they got there, he did what God wanted him to do. He laid his son on the altar about to sacrifice him. And a, a voice came. In verse 15, let's see that this is chapter 22, verse 15 to verse 20. To verse 18. This is chapter 15, chapter 22 from verse 15 to verse. This is 22 from verse 15 to 18. Oh, God will bless somebody this day much more than you can even imagine. In the name of Jesus. So the Bible said, and the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven. The second time and said, By myself, by myself have I sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this sin, and hast not will tell the son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless you. And in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. And as the sun which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because not that thou hast obeyed my voice. Abraham walked with God, he obeyed the instructions of heaven and the bible said in return god pronounced irreversible blessings not only on him but also on his children and his grandchildren and everyone that belongs to the family of abraham 
The good news for you and for me is this. If you are a child of God, if you are born again, according to Galatians chapter, chapter 3 from verse 13, you are of the seed of Abraham. And like Father Abraham did, you are now expected to follow the word, the instructions of God. So when you are a seed of Abraham, then you begin to walk the way he walked. And thank God for Jesus who also came to give us an example of how to walk with God. Jesus said in, 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 in John chapter 8, in verse 12, John chapter 8, verse 29 actually, John 8, 29, he says, I always do that which pleases my father who had sent me. So you and I must always do. If we want to be blessed of God, always do what Jesus did. Always do what Jesus did that pleased God. Remember the Bible said a voice came from heaven concerning Abraham and the voice spoke blessings into his life. You and I must allow heaven to speak for us. How? Walking with God, keeping his word, doing everything that needs to be done to please him. That is the only way. We read Jeremiah 17 verse 7. You must trust God. You must trust Him. You must put your hope in Him. You must focus on God. You must walk with God. You hear His word. You keep His word. Then He will be pleased with you. Brethren, there's no other way to this, to what we are saying. Any other way is to rebel against God. Look at what the scripture says. And I pray you and I will take good notes of all these scriptures that we are looking at. Look at what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19 and verse 20. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19 and verse 20. In verse 19 it says, If you are willing and obedient if you are willing and obedient oh you must be willing and you must be obedient it is not enough to be will to have the will but you must be willing to be obedient so if you are willing and if you are obedient you shall eat the good of the land there is a good waiting for you there is a blessing on your way. And God will not withhold that blessing from you. Remember what the Bible said. That God pronounced and poured out a blessing to Abraham. Because Abraham did, did not withhold his only son. The one that he loved most. So what are you withholding from God? Number one, don't withhold yourself from God. The Bible says, make yourself available as a living sacrifice to God. Don't withhold yourself. Be total for God. Be willing to obey so that you can you can you can you can you can you can enjoy the fullness of God's presence, the fullness of God's blessings, the fullness of God's grace. See, it takes two, like we say in the world, to tangle in love. If, if, I want, if I expect God to bless me, then I must also do something that will provoke such blessing. And that what God expects of you and I, what he desires of you and of me, is to simply walk with him by walking in his word, by doing what he asks you and I to do, be willing and obedient. But the Bible says in verse 20 of Azar chapter, one and I want to appeal to you even to look at that very closely. Say, but if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. 
that is the the fearful part once god speaks a thing whether good or otherwise it will come to pass because the bible says in psalm 119 just write it down verse 89 psalm 119 verse 89 says forever O lord thy word is settled in heaven the moment god pronounces his word it is settled in heaven and heaven will begin to make take all steps to make it work i pray today you will not refuse the voice of god you will not rebel against god because not to obey god is to rebel against him and whosoever does that will be looking for the trouble of god i pray for you as i pray for myself you and i will not enter into the trouble of god because the bible says it is a fearful thing for any man to fall into the hand of the living god is a fearful thing to fall into the hand of the living god so please don't fall into the hand of god for i mean don't let god fight you let's speak it let's say it that way so you and i want to become the friend of god so that we can be continue to enjoy his blessings only god can bless and you will not have any sorrow only God can bless you and will not make will not bring trouble with the with the blessing. So you must be willing and obedient, as we have read in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, and you must refuse to refuse the word of God. Meaning you must not align yourself with the enemy of God. To refuse God is to accept the enemy of God. You will not accept the enemy of God in Jesus' name. Look at what the Bible says in verse in Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Oh, Lee to Mo. Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Look at verse 21 and verse 22. Verse 21 and verse 22. You must not agree with the enemy of God in any area of your life. You must com completely renounce what the enemy stands for. The Sabbath says in verse 21 of Psalm 139, said, Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee. Do not I, do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee. And I'm, I'm not I grieved with those that rise up against thee. Sammy says, I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. Don't love Satan. Don't love devil. Don't go against God. The moment a man refuses to hear what God is saying and even fails to do what he has heard, that man becomes a friend of the enemy of God. You can't do that because the repercussions are very, 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 very grievous. You can't do that. I'm praying for myself as I'm praying for you that even from this moment going forward, we will simply walk with God by walking in his word, by embracing the totality of his kingdom agenda. Brethren, there's no other way to success in life. Here the psalm says, I hate them that hate you with perfect hatred. Perfect hatred. Hate what God hates and love what God loves. That is the key to unstoppable blessing from the Lord. Look at what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9. I pray for you as I'm praying for myself. We will love God with all our heart. 
with all our heart that we no more time for game playing Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9 says, Thou hast loved the righteousness. We're talking about Jesus here now. And you know, because he is your senior brother, he is my senior brother from the same father, that we must follow what he is telling us to do. Say, Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. You must not only love righteousness, you must also hate iniquity. You must not love God and love his enemy at the same time. You cannot do that. I cannot do that. Jesus says it is not possible to serve two masters. If you have the time, read Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 6 actually, verse 24. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. I choose who I want to serve, but I have chosen by the grace of God to serve God and to serve him alone. So Hebrews 1 9 says, you must not only love righteousness, you must also aid iniquity. You must also aid iniquity. And what will happen? Therefore, your God, the Bible says, even your God will anoint you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Meaning, when you love God and you hate his enemy with perfect hatred, then God will pour on you the oil of gladness for joy, for progress, for all that will bring you unstoppable, irreversible blessings. So therefore, my brothers and my sisters, as we study together this word, the word of God, walking with God, we need to pay attention and we need to take heed take heed be careful embrace this word so that god himself can embrace you i pray god will be for you even in the name of jesus so we saw what abraham did we saw what god expects of you and i and you and i will not fail him in jesus name look at chapter 28 Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 and verse 2. Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 and 2. You and I will have overtaking blessings in Jesus' name. Overflowing blessings in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 and 2. Say, so it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken. How? Diligently. Say it with me one more time. Diligently to hacking, diligently to pay attention. See, you have you are hearing the word, which I know is not new to you. You have heard this before. You will hear it again. But pay attention to what you are saying, to what you are hearing, because it is the voice of God. Say to with me, it is the voice of God. Say it again, it is the voice of God. So you must not ignore the voice of God because. That could be very, 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 that will attract his anger. So, you shall hearken diligently to the voice of God. How? You observe to do all that he is saying to you. Then, but says, and he will set you on high. He will take you high. He will promote you. He will enlarge you. He will increase you. He will expand you. Even in joy. Even in peace. Unlimitedness of God will become your portion. He says, and all these blessings. Say with me. And all these blessings shall come on you. Not only will you be blessed. You will have overflowing blessing. And the key is that you should hacking diligently to the voice of God. Blessings, blessings, blessings. When you walk with God, when you obey his voice, when you willingly, intentionally, deliberately, very diligently obey what he is saying to you, when you hate what he hates, when you love what he loves, when you walk with him in truth, 
and indeed with integrity then you will become the, the the attraction of the world i'm praying for you as i'm praying for myself we will not we will not walk against the plans of god for our lives by ourselves it's very simple just walk with him obey him and let him trust you and you will enjoy hope in heavens shall we be please begin to thank god for this morning god has been so good to you he has been so good to me he has our best interest at heart he wants us to enjoy him like never before he's simply asking you and i walk with me walk with me embrace me embrace my word don't ignore my voice say my father my father my father thank you for your love for me Thank you for being so mindful of me. Thank you for your interest in me. I'm so grateful to you. Talk to him. Because he loves you. That's why he has sent forth his word to you today. And it behoves on you and I to embrace the word. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your word. We thank you because you are a good, gracious God. To you be all the glory. If you have heard me this morning you have heard the word of god not me you have heard the word and you have not you are not yet in the book of life of god please consider coming to him the first thing you must do to begin to walk with god is to be born again you cannot become a friend of god when you are doing the things that are contrary to his will the Bible said Jesus came to this world to save sinners. He's come to save you. He shed his blood for you. Don't allow his sacrifice to be a waste for you. Please run to him and surrender and submit to him. And he will take you the way you are. He will cleanse you. He will begin to walk with you so that you can be like him. But if you're already in the Lord, I want to please beg of you, don't do anything anything that will make you to wander away don't turn to the right don't turn to the left simply keep your focus on him cleave to him hang on with god cling to god nothing else you matter with you and avoid anything that will turn him away from you and god will help you and he will help me even to remain the friends of God. My Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. Lord, we are asking, please help us all by your grace and in your power to keep walking with you with in, in integrity, in truth. Lord, that your blessings will continue to flow into our lives in the name of Jesus and your heavens will be open over our lives and we will begin and continue to, to walk to, to succeed in all that we do because that will bring you joy and glory thank you lord let your word find a space in our heart and help us lord even to continue to reflect on you that will continue to do the right things all the time your name alone be glorified thank you our god blessed be your name for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let the winner shout aloud, Amen. And God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day.